All right. All right. Uh, tonight, I'm going to review Hugo Montano's uh, claim that the California death penalty is an increasing financial burden to the state. I would counter that because of the death penalty, we are actually not suffering more of the death. Uh, based, uh, my, the basis for my arguments is uh, three in fact. One would be the number of prisoners that's currently being held in a prison. Two would be the potential loss in productivity and the ultimate cost occurred for, uh, if uh, those death, death sentence prisoners are released from our stuck in prison. And the last is the amount of money we actually put into the uh, death sentence prosecution. For the first basis, it was said that the California prison system has about 700 people in death row that may be raised to 1,000 by 2030. And roughly it takes about 90,000 to hold one death row inmate per year compared to 47,000 for regular inmates. However, the California Department of Correction and Rehabilitation stated that we currently have 460,000 prisoners in our prison system right now. Now, if you take that, multiply it by the 47,000, the cost is actually much more than what it takes to put a death row uh, inmates and keep them in prison until the day they die. And second is that death row only remain there for a certain amount of time. After that, they would die and cost would be gone, while most of the inmates may stay there for a very long time. That alone would incur a far greater cost in the future. The second basis I'm doing on that based on what you're not, is potential loss of productivity. According to the LA Times, one death penalty prosecution can cost us up to 20 times the cost of one regular prosecution. However, but the regular prosecution keep on keep in prison. There may be a chance that a prisoner could escape, or they could kill others while they're in prison as well. For every time a person dies, they are there is considered a net loss in productivity, and there will be thin fees like funerals and other hospitals or whatever fees that occur to the victim. And the, for that reason alone, the cost is actually much higher. Consider the fact that that Adam Lippitz from the New York Times stated that for each inmate put to death, there are about three to eighteen murder, murders prevented. That's, take whatever number you get for that it was lost, multiply by that number, that would give you a much greater cost than what it would take just to keep one person in prison and on death row. And the last basis that I'm basing my argument on is the fact that we are spending way too much money on the death penalty, or that's the assumed case. The fact of the matter is, according to uh, Wendy Fry of the KBBS, they're in here, um, during her, when she covered the cost of life in prison, it said that we actually spent 10% uh, of our general fund and more than $10 billion for our prison. And while each, the 13 execution would cost us $308 million, the, the difference is very, very high. So if we are actually saying that uh, the death penalty is, is causing more of a financial burden to the state, it's more like the prison system is causing more of a burden to the state. And we should fix the prison system more than the death penalty. And because of all that, I believe that I concluded that the death penalty has actually prevented the state from occurring or acquiring a much higher cost. Thank you. All right, everything's relatively easy to follow. You do come up with this counterclaim that says that there's going to be this uh, long-term cost because of the death penalty, and I like the idea of that. Uh, the place where you get the most out of that is on the uh, second point where you're talking about productivity issues and when you're talking about, for instance, the potential impact that the death penalty has on uh, murders in the state uh, and preventing 3 to 18 murders, for instance, that seems to be a substantial economic cost that we might balance against 
whatever the cost that uh, the state assumes. The other two points basically just do a comparison between what we spend on the death penalty versus what we spend on uh, the prison population uh, in general. And I'm not exactly sure that that gets you very much because I think the advocate would acknowledge that we spend a lot in total on the prison population, but if you're doing it at a per capita cost, uh, it really is double for the um, uh, the uh, death penalty people. This is where I think you need to go more into some of that cost issue that you kind of hinted at. For instance, those hidden costs that might occur uh, if those prisoners were not in death row and they were in the general population, what costs might be assumed? For instance, additional protection or guards, like you mentioned, f funeral costs. Uh, one of the things that occurred to me while you, was ta while you were talking about it, if the state knows that a person is particularly dangerous but puts them in the general population and they kill somebody else in the general population, are there liability costs here? Could somebody be sued in this situation? That seems to me like a potential cost, and there's maybe an argument to be made there. That's just something that occurred to me while you were talking about this. So I think the second point has the best part of the argument, and the first two points simply do a comparison um, <coughs> of what the spending is. I think you need to talk a little bit more about the advocates' arguments here and whether or not the total spending is really having a drain on the state, um, You know how significant it is. You might point out what the state's total budget is. You did have uh, the argument that the whole prison population is 10 percent of the budget and the death penalty part is really only $300 million, so we're talking about $300 million out of the whatever that is $100 billion budget. I think that's the way you need to make that comparison to, to minimize the cost issue. All right, thank you.